So, hi Chris, welcome to Zagreb again and welcome to our show. Uh, tell me, how do you feel today? When did you get in? And we got in uh, yesterday, actually, um, very early in the morning, and uh, we spent some time walking around uh, the city, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, just enjoying the day. It's been a great day. Uh, you played here last year. Uh, is it too soon to, to play in one place, like twice in one year? Well, it's not for me to say, you know, I, it's... I, I, I meant for you, not for the audience. They can right. never get enough. <laughs> Um, no, I, I think as long as you guys want us back, we'll, we'll come back, you know. So. Uh, do you remember the last show you played here? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. What was it like? It was great. Um, you know, uh, I was thinking earlier that uh, how it was very cool that they were singing along with a lot of the lyrics and uh, a lot of, um, <laughs> I remember two, two, two uh, pits in the back yeah. and uh, yeah, it was a very good show. Yeah. Uh, th this venue is a bit bigger than the one you played in last time, so I was wondering, do you like uh, uh, smaller venues to play in, like more a more uh, private atmosphere, or, or big venues, or maybe open venues? Uh, both for different reasons. Uh, I like the smaller ones because then you can you can see more of your audience, mm -hmm. and y you know it's kind of like instead of me thinking of myself as the musician that's playing to the crowd, it's kind of like we're all friends just getting mm -hmm. together. Um, to have a good time, you know. Um, with the larger show, of course, it's kind of cool in its own way because there is more, more fans and you can hear it in the air. You can just hear the whole crowd kind of like making, they, they have their own kind of sound in the, in the air. And uh, so that's cool too, but usually you can't see as many fans when you get to shows like this. Okay. So tell me, you started playing in Megadeth in 2008. Correct. Uh, how did you end up in Megadeth? Well, uh, you know, I was, uh, I had actually, it happened really quick. I got a call from uh, Megadeth's management, and they basically just asked me, you know, how would you like to be the lead guitarist in the band Megadeth? And what else could I say except yes, you know? And uh, so uh, at that point, you know, I went down and I met with Dave, and we talked about what each other wants and expects and and uh, pretty much from there it was like okay well we got to get to work because we've got a month before the first show so I just started learning songs from right then uh, was it hard for you to adjust to uh, their kind of playing if I, I think can so, put it yeah. like that yeah yeah Dave's got such a unique rhythmic style that um, it took me a while to, to comp it and even to this day you know I still work on it a little bit because he has a very he, he pushes and he pulls the beat um, ahead and, and back, you know, and it's got such a different feel to it for me where I'm very, you know, I, I uh, you know, work with the metronome all the time and stuff like that and he'll push mm -hmm. and he'll pull it and so I get, I had to get very used to that and then once we lock in though, it sounds so tight, it's, it's amazing. Uh, tell me, would you, if you hadn't joined Megadeth, would you still be playing in Nevermore and Jack Panzer? I don't know, I mean, it's, it's too hard to say, you know, that's like, making up uh, the past, but, um, you know, I would think so, yeah. Uh, uh, as I understand, you also play the piano and the, the violin. Yes, and but very uh, badly at this point. I have, it's been so long since I've been able to actually work on them mm -hmm. that, uh, that I wouldn't dare try and play anything for anybody. Uh, uh, and uh, you also have online guitar lessons. How did you get the idea to do that? That was in 2004, I remember. I was, I was actually living in um, Denver, Colorado. And, uh, you know, I, I had had some students that had moved away. And I, you know, I was like, wow, I wish I could still, you know, teach them somehow. And so I started using uh, MSN uh, Instant Messenger at that time uh, just to kind of check it out. And it looked like it was going to work pretty good. And then ever since then, you know, I've, I've been teaching with whatever Instant Messenger seems to work the best. Do you, do you have time for all this? I mean, obviously not when you're on tour. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it, it is an unfortunate in a way that, um, you know, all of my students kind of have to take a break, um, at least with my lessons, um, during the time that I'm gone. But uh, when, when I'm off the road, then it's just a normal schedule, you know, usually a lesson a week.
Now, I know that everybody probably asks you this uh, in lately, uh, but I have to do it because of our fans. Tell me about the big four shows. Um, what do they mean? Do they mean something personal to you, or is it just like a great career move? Or? Right. Well, you know what the funny thing is, is leading up to the big four shows, I kind of, I just had this general idea that, okay, it's just a really, you know, it's four really big bands that are getting together just to do another kind of concert. You know, it was, I, I really kind of leading up to it had just that kind of an attitude. But then once all four bands got together and we started talking, there seemed to be this whole sense about reinventing thrash metal mm -hmm. altogether. And that kind of became, for me at least, what the big four was about. Was Every, really, everybody's talking about trash again. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there was such a, such a sense that everybody was in it for that idea and, and nobody was thinking you know, about either their individual band or just the next gig or anything like that, but it was the whole sense of uh, reviving thrash and, and really bringing it to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And uh, my last question, you've mentioned the new album. When can we expect it? Uh, I, know you I hope, yes, yeah, so you can always hope, but uh, I would say um, probably third quarter this year, if we're lucky, you know, Assuming. yeah, well, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a wish, so, but we're working on it, so. Okay, thank you very much and have a great show tonight. Thank you very much. Hey, this is Chris Broderick of Megadeth, and you're watching Metal Eye on Zagreb 1.